When you shop at a Walmart Vision Center, you get it. You know that you'll spend a little less on stylish glasses for the whole family. Welcome to the Vision Center. Let me know if you need help finding the perfect frame. Hey, Mom, you were right. These glasses are cool. Hon, they take our insurance. That means Papa's getting a new pair, too. Whoa, glasses start at just $39. Next stop, groceries. So you can get a little more of what you need. Find a Vision Center near you. Save money, live better. Walmart. What's the room again? Uh, 1240, down at the end. Ooh, what's that? Sammy, don't touch that. That's someone's old food. Here we are. Do you have the key? You have both of ours. Oh, right. Not working. Uh, Rub it. Uh, Come on. Try gosh. flipping it over. Seriously. Why can't we go inside? I'm tired. Give me yours. Are you you have mine. All right. What? Please, if you Dad, could just... Why aren't you opening the door? Can everyone just shut the... Don't go there. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. Learn more at GoRVing.com. Settling is not an option for me. Everything I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? Because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario, and I am going to get straight to the point. Today's episode is intense. Today's episode is very, very deep. I actually cry like a baby during the interview on today's episode. You guys are actually going to hear me cry, which I think is the very first time anyone on social media has ever seen me really show that side of me. I don't think I've ever showed myself emotional on social media. So this is a really big deal for me. But I just had a major breakthrough on this interview. And we are talking about trauma, how to overcome trauma, how to transfer the energy of your trauma into something that you have more control over and just overall the four different types of trauma you guys are going to hear but this is a really really good episode but it, it hits hard you have to come mentally prepared for this on today's episode I interview my dear friend and intuitive coach Janet Namaste if you don't know who that is You might not be a follower of mine for too long. We go live pretty much once a month, every month. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you definitely have seen some of her work, at least a little bit with me. But she is a celebrity intuitive coach and healer. She's also a numerologist and a skilled hypnotherapist. She specializes in past life regression therapy and she was trained by an amazing Dr. Brian Weiss. So she has over 20 years of professional experience. She knows her stuff and she has, she is and has the four Claire's gift since birth, which means she is clairvoyant, claircognizant, Claire audience and Claire sentient. So she is known for her work, especially her signature program, which is the Destiny Blueprint. That's how she starts with all of her clients. And this Destiny Blueprint, it's it's two sessions. I've taken these sessions and they are amazing, amazing, amazing life altering and enhancing sessions and really help you heal. They are proven to put people on their soul's destined path. And she has the expertise of truly helping people discover their soul's purpose. So she is really, really special and really, really amazing. And I'm really excited to introduce her to all of you and have you here how insane this episode is because this interview is amazing. Listen up. I am really excited for today's interview and conversation with Janet Namaste. Janet, do you know that starting to, so right now it's November 30th, but starting tomorrow, December is officially three years that we've been working together. No way. Yeah. We started working together when my grandmother passed away in 2018, December, and then I went to London. Do you remember that? That I remember. Yeah, Yeah. that I remember. I remember we spent the summer prior together in Aruba, right? We 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 met. Yeah, we we met in the water. (laughs) Yeah, we met in Aruba, but- 
you know how it all is in divine timing. We didn't officially yeah. connect until once my grandmother passed away, then I reached out to you. So December this month is actually three years of us working together, which is crazy. Oh, what a blessing. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. So, so tell everybody, tell us who you are. Who is Janet Namaste? What do you do? Introduce yourself. Who am I? I mean, I, I play many roles, right? But I um, am the Claire's, you know, I see, hear and feel spirit. I also am a regular person like, you know, you and I and every all our listeners, but it's not really regular. We're not all regular. We all have our unique gifts. I'm a mom of two teenagers and um, married to my soulmate for, you know, almost we're together for 25 years. And I was born with a gift of bringing out the gifts in others. I was um, brought up in a family of um, first generation American with deep Eastern European values. And I was taught that you must, you know, educate yourself. You must get the highest form of education that no matter what, you have to always be independent. And even though I was born with all these gifts of seeing, hearing and feeling spirit, and being able to even translate the voice of the soul, I went and furthered my education in, in getting a degree in education and computer science about um, through life's trials and um, the way destiny had it. I don't even want to say tribulations because we've signed up for all of this. Um, I went through really amazing miracles in my life, spontaneous healings, even um, which I think, you know, like even with the miracle of my child not being able to see and um, was given the gift of vision. And through that, you know, life will have its way to bring you on the course of what you were meant to be doing. So I've been doing healing work professionally for the past 20 years, hypnotherapy, working in, in aligning people on their destiny, which is something called the program, the destiny program. So working with the topic that we're going to kind of be delving into today, which is trauma, is really working on the layers of the soul versus the ego at times and of getting through of the, the contract and the choices that we came here on this earth to do. So I help people be that guiding light. Very humbling. Yeah. 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 You, you really do. You you help tremendously. And I know, you know, we have our sessions and honestly, over the course of the past three years, it has, I don't want to say changed my life. I feel like that's not the right wording. I feel like it has accelerated my life. I feel like it has mm -hmm. added so much value to my life. You know, it hasn't changed my life in that way because it's actually how my life is meant to be not so much change something else that's meant to be it's doing exactly what it's meant to do and putting things into places exactly where they're supposed to be so it's actually just enhanced my life and i think you know even with all of the sessions we still are we still are who we are right and i lately have been reflecting and noticing and picking up on why i do certain things that i do and why i am the way i am and where it all stems from and it's right. actually trauma responses it's actually trauma it, it it really comes from trauma basically which i didn't even realize it's so funny i had a conversation with someone a few months ago and she was saying and i said this out of total ignorance she was talking about how she is a certain way and she said it's from her trauma i believe her parents were divorced and something along the line, something really big and astounding that her parents were divorced and it gave her all this trauma. And I said, I'm so lucky. Like I never had trauma because I was thinking of it as, oh, my parents are still together. You know, right. I had a great, amazing childhood. So I'm like, oh yeah, I never had trauma. And then after that conversation, I started to pick up on it and I'm like, this is a trauma response. I do have trauma. This is trauma. <laughs> that's trauma. So let's go back. And if you can explain to everyone an overall yeah. understanding of what trauma really is and how it affects us throughout our lives, because I totally, literally up until a few months ago, thought I did not have trauma. And I'm sure there's people who 
feel the same way. So can you explain what it really is? Absolutely. You know, and thank you for sharing that about the sessions as well, because yes, does life, it's not about you changing. It's that your awareness is, you know, you're able to see clearer. It's as if somebody gave you a new, new um, prescription. 100%. Of, yeah, it's not changing, it's just making it better. Making it clearer, making it better and seeing all the opportunities. And, you know, it's interesting what you were saying about the trauma response. What trauma response is, is a cyclical pattern that we keep on responding in the same way. And this is like the hamster in the wheel cycle. And what happens is that it doesn't have to be something of dramatic nature of God forbid someone getting raped or witnessing a killing or murder, because there is, you know, I, I, you know, I work with people with trauma all the time and there are some that are just complete life shattering. And it's not about comparison where of someone who um, has undergo, who was a child of people who have gone through divorce or who were in a house where there's scarcity or filth or dirt. You know, what trauma is, is that it's so objective and it's so personal to that, to that individual. And what it does, it, it's something that jeopardizes or gives us the individual um, um, a feeling that we're not safe our sense of safety is being like, you know, tested, the world no longer feels safe. And what what it may seem is that it then it, it then projects into, well, maybe I'm not responding, right? Maybe, you know, it's my self image, maybe it's because of me, you know, it's something that whatever we see, whatever we hear, we feel all of our five senses, if you could think about that since the moment of birth and we record it and, they, and it stores in a compartments in our brain and in our cells and in our body. And when something shattering happens, like for instance, a loss, you know, maybe we've experienced a death or life the way we've, we've known it with even our family members. And all of a sudden one day in, in a second, something can switch. Like one moment your, your, you know, life is your oyster. The next moment is like, we feel like we are sinking or swimming. Like, what do we do? So trauma is very shattering. It really is very shattering. So all, everything that we've seen or heard or experienced is embedded in ourselves. And, um, it pierces our psyche, it pierces our minds. It can harm our self-image. It makes the world seem unsafe, um, scary, and even fearing us and stunting us in getting into healthy relationships. So there are there are definitely different ways to go about and to uncover and to really like unpack it, but it has to be done in a very loving way, because especially that we went through COVID and everybody felt trapped during that time. I mean, now it's um, psychotherapy and everything like that is very mainstream. Reiki, I've been doing Reiki for 20 years. Now it's like, you know, everyone is doing it. These are things that help us balance and help us feel, you know, um, calmer. But the thing is with trauma is that it's very real, you know, we don't, you know, what, what one person it's through their lens and we have to respect that. So sometimes we have to be very cognizant of even certain words are triggers for people. Certain smells are triggers for people. Certain um, songs are triggers for people. Utilizing those senses will trigger us and it stunts us into really happiness into living in our fullest potential because many people become loyal to their trauma if they even remember it mm -hmm. and fear of happiness that the trauma may happen again in their life. So it's, it's a vicious, it's a vicious cycle. If you don't work or start trusting and surrounding yourself with professionals and a, a community that is really able to aid you in the most compassionate way. It's very important to have a self-care plan. It's a distressing and disturbing experience. Truly it is. I mean, trauma can be something that 
in that moment might be so small, but when you reflect, you know, like you said, it could happen overnight. It could happen in the blink of an eye. It could just be mm-hmm. a split second decision that was made or a split second movement that was made. And in that split second, it's something that will affect you in 10, 15, 20 years and so on and so forth. Sometimes even for the rest of your life. Totally. So- it, lives inside, it lives inside of you. It doesn't go away because we've ingested it. It's inside of us. It doesn't go away unless you're ready to address it. Mm -hmm. It never will go away unless you address it. And the way you address it is in a compassionate way. And that's, we'll speak about those methods, but it's true. Ill, Ill will rear its ugly head and hurtful head in 10 years, in 20 years. Like my trauma that I, you know, almost was in 40 years. 40 years that came up and I'm like, whoa, I can't believe this. And it was in the middle while I did a huge webcast for like hundreds of people. And I'm like, oh boy. (laughs) So it's when you least expect, it's not of like when we're looking for it. Right, right, right. I mean, I would hope no one is really looking for it, but that's actually the perfect segue because I want to know how does someone identify their trauma. Like I said, I I wouldn't expect anyone to be necessarily looking for it, but I feel like most people, yeah. or you could tell me, is it more common that most people don't even realize their trauma or don't even realize that their actions are a result of their trauma? So how does someone identify it? Or is it really common that they don't? It's very common that they don't because what happens is um, very, you know, most often than not, when a trauma happens, we end up when we're little kids, you know, like we used to love, like I used to love to play make believe, you know, I'm the mommy, or I'm the bride, or I'm the shop owner, or I'm this. So when trauma happens, we end up playing, we end up connecting to a shadow part of us or of ourselves, you know, we end up um, playing and putting a mask on or a different costume of Um, someone like an alter ego that will help us survive through life. And let me be this confident chick. Let me be this, you know, superstar woman or whatever it is. And when that happens, it's an automatic response. It's a protective thing that happens when our security or survival is threatened. Automatically, we go into protection mode right away, right away. And when we go on like that, on protection mode for a long time, we tend to think that that's a part of us or that is us when in reality it isn't. And if you're lucky, which you are very lucky, right? And I'm sure whoever's listening to this pod is very lucky. Their life will present us with a wake-up call. And the wake-up call is this reminder. And it's like a piercing of that outer shell of you to see that bright light inside of you. And you're like, oh my God, all this time I've been behaving in a certain way, thinking like that's who I am when that really isn't who I am. It was a protective shield. It was from the, from the trauma. And so nine out of 10 times, people don't know that they're behaving in that way. And there are four prime wounds that I find from my experience with my, with what I've been working, you know, with all the hundreds of people that I've worked with, it's the four prime wounds of these, of the trauma is neglect. That's one Mm -hmm. of where a person may not feel that they were getting enough love because love is our medicine. Love is our, it's, it's, it's like, we need love. Like we need the oxygen to, to survive. And that's the basic needs of a human need. It's refusal of affection is neglect. So that's, and that's number one in terms of trauma. The second is one of abuse. When we have a traumatic experience of, with a relationship, it could be a friend of betrayal. It could be of our spouse, our partner. It could be but abuse where there's somebody else that's expressing domination or projecting domination over us. That is traumatic. Another one is codependency. And as children, we are dependent on our caretakers. If there is a moment where our caretaker can't can't fulfill our survival needs and our survival needs are also love, we feel that we have to look outside of ourselves 
for love. So there are people that have had an incredible, like a, you know, beautiful, grew up in a quote unquote, beautiful home, yet are looking for that codependency, feeling that there is something missing in their life, that they're not enough if, if they're not being taken care of, or they have to feel that they take care of someone. That's traumatic. And the last is loss. It's, it's loss of even people that move a lot, you know, people that are, I, you know, like I've, I've worked, a lot of my clients are in SAG, you know, and they're actors and some are in the military and they're constantly moving around just even of not staying in a place long enough to feel your, make your Zen sacred space feels like loss. Or if you lose somebody that you love, that of death, those four things of neglect, abuse, codependency, and loss. And when I talk about abuse, I'm not just speaking about, you know, physical abuse. I'm talking about emotional abuse of narcissism, all these things that we, and things that we may have seen in others. It may have not even happened to our, to us. But we're, we fear so much of that, our empathy of feeling that God forbid that happens to me, that we put that guard up on ourselves. It may not even been our trauma, but we, we embodied somebody else's trauma in ourselves because of our compassion, not even knowing. And then it actually, what it does, it sets us back into having healthy, open relationships. A lot of signs are fearing acceptance from others. Like it's almost like you don't want to even ask for help because you're afraid of relying on others and you reject offers for help. Like if someone helps me out or helps, I would say, thank you, thank you, thank you. But it's also those that have been, you know, traumatized, they feel that they're, they're not deserving, you know, and they have an, a, a hard time of identifying their weakness and a hard time of identifying their strengths, their life goals. It's very difficult. It's like the world seems very foggy and uncertain. That's really what happens of this identification of the trauma sometimes happens when we least expect it. It happens in our bodies. Our bodies will always tell us and it'll be all of a sudden you have a sharp pain in your stomach or when there's patterns that are cyclical for years, that's trauma. That's trauma. Wow. Girls, it is time to feel good about your finances. Money and Mindset with Bright and Brian, a podcast from Truist, is here to help you reshape your relationship with money. Tune in every month for inspiration and practical advice to manage your money better and live with more joy and confidence. The Money and Mindset with Bright and Brian podcast is hosted by psychologist Bright Dixon and financial wellness expert Brian Ford. Together, they explore ways to develop your money know-how and improve your well-being, covering topics like can money actually buy happiness and how to cure money anxiety. You can listen to Money and Mindset with Bright and Brian on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or truest.com. Okay, girls, as you all know, I am big on building a community. And with a community like For the Girls, you are going to love this. Drizzly is the number one app for alcohol delivery, and you can find the biggest selection of women-owned and black-owned beer, wine, and spirits brands, and then get them delivered in under 60 minutes. And of course... This includes non-alcoholic beverages for those of you like me who prefer a mocktail. Now you can sip with purpose, find your new favorite drinks, and explore brands that are shifting in industry while supporting the diverse stories that make them great. Make your memorable moments even more meaningful by choosing brands with intention. Let's raise a glass, whether it is wine or soda, to the spirit of representation and belonging, all while discovering incredible drinks with stories worth celebrating. Just download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com to start sipping with purpose. Wow. Yeah, Steve. It, so I, I never heard of it in that, like broken down into those four somewhat of categories, I guess. And and really, I mean, I could relate to each one. You know, every single one that you said, 
I reflect and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. I think that the one that comes up for me personally, the most is the neglect. And I actually remember, I know you won't remember, but I mentioned this on a session with us once when I was talking about, and I didn't even realize it at the time. I just kind of spitballed something, you know, you just were kind of challenging me and saying, think of whatever example you gave me. And this came to my head at the time. And I mentioned to you that as a kid, I felt left out a lot in what I used to go to dance school. And so I felt like that as a kid. And then that kind of carried over into as I got older, because I went through that a lot in college too. I was often left out. People that I was friends with initially, and then they kind of hang out without me or they do things without me. And the way I was in college, then now it reminds me of the way that I felt as a kid from when that happened to me when I was a kid, you know, all my friends and they would do things without me or hang out without me. I wasn't as included. And then all of that circles to now, what I talk about quite often on my podcast, I actually talked about it on the last episode, I'm such a homebody. I don't even put myself in a position to be left out because I'm like, at this point, I don't, I don't even make friends, you know? <laughs> and it's, at this point, I'm yeah. like, y'all, y'all can't even leave me out because I'm not even talking to you. So it's, <laughs> that is such a trauma. That neglect is such a trauma response. Dude of me staying in on the weekends, me not wanting to socialize, me not wanting to be bothered. And then it all just ties back to when you just mentioned that neglect trauma literally is what I told you a few months ago that I totally forgot about that I said, I feel like something that is somewhat of a trauma for me from my childhood is being left out that carried over into college. And now it's to the point where I see that my actions are a result of that inner trauma which is that neglect category. Like I said, I mean, I could see all of them, but that one is really sticking out because I talk about that all the time. Oh, I'm such a homebody. Oh, I don't go out. I, oh, I don't like to meet people. I mean, I used to get a C in conduct because all I did was socialize. All I did, my, my report card was like, she talks too much. <laughs> she has too many yeah, friends. Yeah. You know, socializing is not a hard thing for me to do, but it has become something harder and harder and it's it's totally a result of that inner trauma correct and you know it's um that's so funny i also got to see in conduct too like the, <laughs> the teachers the teachers used to tell my parents she's a really bright child <laughs> but she doesn't stop talking and it's so funny because now you know talking pays our bills <laughs> talking pays the bills i know talking in high pays school our bills, but in it's high quality school, talk. in my um in my freaking uh high school yearbook i had a uh, i forget it was like the biggest social butterfly whatever whatever the saying was it was like the friendliest girl at school or the most talkative girl at school yeah. something like that cuz all i did was talk and make friends i was constantly talking and making friends i loved being friends with everybody even the kids who were like the mathletes that didn't even want to look at me. Yeah. I'm like talking to them, like, tell me what you do at home. You know, <laughs> like I was always talking to everybody, but it truly like that, that being left out thing, that, that seeing my friends together and I wasn't invited or I wasn't included, yeah. that shit hurt. Like that shit used to get to me. And I, it was like that since I was a child throughout to my twenties. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, nope, can't deal with it anymore. You know? You know, I have, I had a similar experience too. It's of being left out, but it's, I was the only child until like about my sister and I are nine and a half years apart, nine years apart. Yeah. So everybody had at, you know, in my neighborhood, there were so many, there were siblings and I'm like, man, I want a sibling too. You know, Mm -hmm. I want, so I, I always wanted a big family and, and cousins and this and that. And I was very close with my cousins, but they were all boys. I was the only girl. So I do have that, that similar feeling of neglect of feeling left out. But going to that, being the social butterfly, I felt it. I love people. I love to learn about people. I love to, but it's also being friends. And I remember in high school, it's friends with, like you said, the math geeks, the goths, the the rockers, the the you know the cool crowd, the all this, the jocks, all of them. 
but maybe that's also a safety mechanism mechanism. I'm going to call it, I'm going to kind of psychoanalysis, like do a psychoanalysis on, on this pod right now, but perhaps that was also one of our protective, not just because we didn't go in our house and be a homebody, right? We actually went out and socialized more. So there will always be another group to fall back on. Get it? Right. You know, if these leave me out, I'm not going to get too close in this group because if they leave me out, then I can always go into this group or that group. So, you know, there's something that there's, there's an archetype of those that have been traumatized as well. And um, one is it's, it's the orphan archetype and you don't have to necessarily be adopted to have this archetype. It's one that feels that they just don't belong to a tribe, to a place, to a family, like how, where do I belong? So these are the ones that are the game changers. These are the ones that once they really do, you know, evolve and go, get out there and really heal that just your light in itself can inspire others and give them the courage to do so themselves. But it takes, it takes a lot of like inner work, you know, people are like, well, you know, I, I signed up for this and I did your course and, and I, I just got this 40%, but I still have more work to go. Do I have to sign up for something else? You don't have to sign up for mine, but spirituality and, and healing is a lifetime work. It's until the day you die. It's not, you know, it's investing in yourself and your happiness. And it's in, it's, it, if it resonates with you, the best investment that you could ever make is of healing the depth okay. of your trauma, because we've all experienced it. And okay. people then um, end up self-sabotaging with foods and other vices and addictions and drugs and alcohol to feel, to fill that void that is within them. And they blame themselves exclusively, you know, they direct their anger inward, you know, and there's so much shame. Yeah. Um, so it, it's so multi, multi-layered and, and the self-esteem and it's like the fear of being seen and it's, it's just trauma. Trauma can really stunt the growth of a beautiful soul. And we all have such gifts. It's like, sometimes we don't even realize that we live in the 1% when there's like 99% that is out there. It's, it's, it's important to give yourself that attention that you didn't get or that lover that self-care it's, in, it's imperative. It's a lot. And, and, and it's, it, it makes me emotional even like I have tears yeah. even listening to you because it, it's just, it's, it's, it's something that it takes a long time to, to understand. And I think mm -hmm. that, I think that even hearing you say like, you know, can, do you have to sign up for this? Do I have to sign up for that? I mean, I've been working with you for three years and it didn't even hit me until recently to have like, to, to realize that I have that kind of trauma three years. How many courses? Of course, I've taken tons. I take sessions with you almost every month. We go live. We do all this stuff. And I think like to me, I'm not even necessarily emotional about me. I'm emotional that so many people yes. don't. Yeah, they don't. Like I want everyone to understand it. Like I want everyone to hear it because it's just, it's so deep. Like it's so true. And like so many people hurt so many people and especially themselves. We hurt ourselves. We hurt other people because they don't even realize where it's really coming from, you know, like they don't even realize that these actions and these words are from a lack of something, like you said, you know, whether it's love, care, attention, or whatever it is, like, it's just, it took me so long to realize it. And there's so many people right now that probably are hurting others or are hurting themselves, like just not happy, like they're missing something. Like you said, they feel incomplete. There's the codependency, like they don't even really realize where it's coming from. Yeah. And it just, it makes me so emotional because, you know, it took a while to learn and no, no matter how many courses I would have taken it, it takes that right thing that resonates. Like you just said, it really takes the right thing. And that's why I just got so emotional now. Cause what you just said, it just, it just resonated. Like it kind of, it has to hit you. You have to just have that breakthrough. It takes dedication. And there's so many like Victoria, there's so many people out there thinking that 
this is just the way their life is. Mm-hmm. And oh, I'm just it, like that. That's just how yeah, I am. I, I that, always said that. That's I just how I am. That. That's just how I exactly. am. Exactly. And the moment when they say, well, that's just how I am. That is, that's, it's not a cow, that isn't a cop out. It's never, right. never to put somebody down. That's a defense mechanism. Just, I don't want to feel like that. You know, now I'm getting emotional. I don't want to feel because I totally, <laughs> I feel deeply too. I can't do the work I do if I didn't truly love people and love yeah. life, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there are things that have happened in our childhoods that like, that discount emotions, like you really don't feel that way, or, oh, please just be quiet. You you know, it it wasn't that bad. Even like my aunt and uncle, the whole, the whole family, they're pediatricians. It's crazy. But one time I was with, you know, with my children and I was at my aunt and uncle's office, like for pediatrics. And I, and I shushed my kids. Like I was, my kids are three years apart. My husband used to travel a lot all the time. I was alone a lot and I was like minding a business, you know, the kid, it was a lot, it was a lot. So the kids would talk and I'd be like, shh. And my aunt right then and there, she goes, don't do that. That's abusive. And I said, that's abusive. What did I do? (laughs) And she said, you're discounting what they have to say. And it's, it's basically of that, what they are saying isn't worthy. Right, and right. this is where at times, and this is truly, I'm telling you as a parent, I'm telling you in the most, not only as a professional, but as a parent who lives in the real world, I live in that duality. There are times that when my son questions, like he worries so much about like hurting somebody's feelings, or he questions himself. He's not a good test taker. He's a great audible, but he's not, that's just not him. A part of me thinks is it because I shushed him so many times when he was younger and he, and I caused, and I was a trigger of a trauma, a feeling of making him feel insecure about his decisions or choices, everything in life, we're all connected. Everything we say, everything we do with every action, there's a reaction but instead of a reaction, we have to be proactive. Mm-hmm. You know, the first important thing is becoming accountable when you realize and really start unpacking that trauma when it just pops up. You have to work with someone that you trust, someone that you know that that will honor your, your feelings and that will help intervene and allow you to have that space to feel. Learn to recognize these emotions you know, because your emotions are valid and it lives inside of you. And when we unpack them, there are layers underneath, there are layers underneath that emotion and that emotion, and then we digest it. And there's this whole processing of, of forgiveness, of forgiveness and forgiving ourselves. If we were violated or disrespected, it's not forgiving the per- perpetrator for, for, you know, it's not condoning what they say, what they did is okay, or, but it's forgiving ourselves for feeling that we did something wrong because of that. And now it's about taking our sovereignty, our freedom back. So there are, de- there are different methods for healing, but you're definitely, it's not with you forever. It just takes dedication and lifestyle switch to really want want to live authentically, want to be happy actually, without fearing that someone's gonna come and shut and dim that light. It's I remember a girl that I was close to as a teenager, and she used to say it was a, such a stupid mantra, stupid mantra, I say, but it was a protective gear because of her trauma. And she would say, Well, I just hope for the best, but I expect the worst. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, what the, you know, like, what the f is that? What are you talking about? Come on, what do you mean? I'm like, how do you live like that? You hope for the best. I'm like, what is hope anyway? Hope is like you just stay at your door, like inside your house, hoping somebody's gonna knock on your door and, and give you what you need. You have to take action. So it's right there, creating that energy of entrapment and it becomes thicker and thicker that little snowflake when it first happened turns into this huge igloo that we put ourselves in years later 
but sooner or later, it's going to melt. It will, it will. It's that self-realization. It could be looking in someone's eyes or even listening to this pod and hearing your voice, hearing my voice and something inside of you opens up. It's about wanting to really self-reflect and stepping into your power. And it's, and it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. So that's, again, a, another perfect segue because my next question is, are we stuck with our trauma forever? Or is it actually possible to fully remove ourselves from it? Like you said, it's something that's with you forever, but is it in a way that you just, you can recall it or is it a way that it still can affect you? Like, or can we actually grow from it completely? Both. Uh, we're not we're not stuck with well definitely not stuck with the trauma forever, meaning that we could fully remove it and we grow from it. That's what I mean by both. The first thing is acknowledging when it does pop up, um, and working with someone absolutely, and then when you work with someone who's a professional, truly, what happens? We we undergo those different layers of the trauma. And of what was the payoff because you you lived in this self-sabotage for so long, thinking that this is all that you deserved. What was the payoff? Well, the payoff is I'm safe. Nobody can ever hurt me. So that's why I stay single. That's why I go for relationships where people are unattainable because I can't get hurt. They don't realize that there's a program that's constantly in their subconscious that's that's there regulating like just like our heartbeats, we're breathing right now and it's happening automatically. So does that subconscious trauma pattern. It's there in the background. It's like this background music. So what we have to do is we acknowledge it. We actually make it loud. We make it loud and we listen to it with full reverence, compassion and empathy. And then we change the tune for it to empower us. And we, but we have to integrate it in our bodies. So that has to do with acceptance that it, that it happened, but you don't have to be loyal to the experience. What's most important is um, this is the way I work with everyone is I help them appreciate and gain the integration and the strength and the wisdom that they have because of it. And it's like, it's beautiful to see the spark in people's eyes come up. Like it's so bright and their smile, like their smile lights up the world. Like they're able to like really smile and they're able to feel what love really feels like, you know, like that falling in love again and they start falling in love with themselves. So 100%, you can fully extract it. What you're doing is you are, you're transferring the energy. You can never, um, when I say extract, it's changing one form of energy into another form of energy. It doesn't have to be the way it was. We're still, you know, if I look in my eyes, I still have the same eyes as I do when I was a, a two-year-old. You know, I have like these big hazel eyes, but there's so much depth and so much wisdom and sadness and grief and love and happiness and all those emotions and even betrayal and everything that we've, because we need to feel emotions in order for us to grow. When we numb ourselves, we're just like at a detour at a crossroads and we're just standing there like a deer in headlights. Mm -hmm. So it is 100% possible because the path is like to liberation, to happiness. So yeah, like, like you said, it, it's the, it's transferring the energy. So you're not removing it from you because it's, it's always, I guess, in a sense, part of you, but you're transferring it from being a, a negative, hurtful energy to being a, a powerful, you get your power back, you know, it, it's yep. a powerful, it's an energy that you're now in control of. It may used to have been an energy that controlled you. And then you pretty much get the energy into the, you know, the power of your own hands. And that's, more or less the transfer of it. Yeah. And you know, like the only thing that's constant is change, but we try to, we try to like, people are so fearful. It's like that law of impermanence, like this too shall pass when something is horrible. It's not going to last forever. And when something is amazing, that's not going to last forever either. That's why it's important to be in the moment. And that really is one of the main methods of helping 
to heal the trauma is being in the moment. It's mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Truly. That's one, that's one of many. Yeah. Wow. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I know, of course, as we talked about having someone professional work with you and help you to overcome trauma is super important. And I think more people should be investing into this type of type of work, but can you give some other examples of what the inner work looks like to release and overcome this trauma, to really transfer the energy, to become something that we are in control of? Absolutely. And if you are going to be working with someone that is professional, that works with trauma and is able to basically help heal an incredible approach is regression work, getting to the root of what it is in a very gentle way, because through regression, it takes the client or it takes you into a place where you can even be on the vantage point, watching the, 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 you know, what was happening, not being in it. So you disconnect from the actual emotion and that in itself is empowering because then you're able to kind of plug in the choices that you have at that moment through regression work, um, progression work. There's something that I, that I do call the journey into inner peace, which is regression, integration, and progression, which we get to the root of different traumatic experiences where they live in your body and how you've been behaving and stunting your growth because of it. And once we tackle that in a very gentle way, I say tackle, it sounds like so aggressive, but it isn't. It's something where the person, it's like almost like quantum healing because you're in charge all the time, but yet you get, it almost like you get your power back. You feel that you, whatever energy that you gave out because of that traumatic experience, you gain that back. So that's called, that's called the, um, the journey to inner peace session. Um, behavior therapy, like, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy is good as well with a, that's what, you know, professional being outside, even just of going outside for a walk, being, seeing the scenes of, um, real nature, the lush greens, you know, filling your lungs up with, with oxygen, having sun, you know, vitamin D real vitamin D, as long as you use SPF, like sun protection, <laughs> You know, it's, it's, um, but do, you know, just be out there in itself, like, you know, where you're, you're out there in nature in itself will ground you and it'll allow the movement to, it's not stagnant because think of like a trauma is like a rock that has been inside of a lake or a river for a very, very long time that it already embedded itself in that place. But if you're, you know, a storm comes, that rock is going to move, but you don't want to wait until a storm comes. You want to be in charge of like moving that rock and allowing it to flow. So what I highly suggest even is like water therapy as well. Take baths just in itself, like even, you know, magnesium baths or whatever it is, just to be in water and allow yourself to um, be immersed and, and visual visualization, visualize like all of the shadow aspects, like going down the drain. Another thing is actually being part of a group, part of a community, joining in on, you're like, well, I've never meditated. I don't know what, you know, uh, how, how do I become part of a meditation group, a mindfulness group when I have no idea what it is? Just try because, um, you know, I've been doing it for many years, right? but I'm just like you. And it's it each time it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime devotion. And each time you do it, it's like a, an exercise. It's like a muscle in our, in our hearts. When we do it over and over and over again of meditation, then it creates the space between the inhale and exhale where clarity comes in. It allows whatever is inside of you to move in a natural way without you fearing, you know, that it's, it's going to harm you in any way you end up embodying and feeling in control. Cause when you're in control of your breath, you're in control of everything. When we fear, fear that we're not in control, that's when anxiety happens. That's when anxiety attacks, where we feel like there's not enough air or we get claustrophobic, the fear of being enclosed in small spaces, that there's not going to be enough air. All of these are traumatic responses and it's very real, but through mindfulness, through yoga, um, Kundalini outside being outdoors, 
being amongst a group of, it doesn't have to be hundreds of people, it could just be just a few people that you even do um, whatever, like a reading group, I don't know, like a book club of something, just where you feel safe and secure and all those things. NLP is another form, which is, it is basically reprogramming of the way our neurological system works and the language that it's been using. And another thing is called EMDR. And this is where, when we go to sleep at night, we go into a beta and theta, we go from a beta to a theta and alpha state. And through when our eyes are moving back and forth, when we are in REM sleep, this is when we're tapping into our subconscious. So what EMDR does, it mimics the same thing that happens when we are in REM sleep in real time while we're awake. And this is where we can reprogram our subconscious. So truly, I, I invite everybody to download whatever meditation. I have hundreds of them on YouTube every, you know, for free and hop on, on you know, Raw Real Talks or whatever it is online. When I do the monthly vibes and our talks, we always go into either some sort of exercise, some tips, some meditation, but it's important that you stay with one particular thing that you chose for yourself and do it consistently for at least three weeks to, to really like three, three weeks to appear like a month and a half, because then it gets embedded and now you're repatterning your subconscious with something brand new. And that's what it is of it's not it's not replacing completely. But you're moving that out. And you're allowing something good in. And those are just methods just there's so many. But that's something that anyone can start with that. That's it's such powerful stuff that on a day to day basis, no one really does or thinks about, you know, you have to be listening to a podcast like this. You have to be following someone like you, a healer. You have to be paying attention to, to this specific topic and this specific world, you know, really this whole world of, of things. It's not just paying attention to trauma, but even just paying attention to meditating and self-help and bringing awareness to what the energy of the month is and the eclipses and all the kind of things that go on. You know, it's just a lot to pay attention to and a lot to stay, a lot to stay in tune with. So I understand if it's like overwhelming for the average person who's just living their day-to-day life, they just wake up, they go to work, they come home, they go to happy hour, maybe they go out and see their friends on the weekend. Like that's just how life is, right? That's just, we go through the motions, but then there's really the inner work to actually help us go through those motions, but in our best self, you know, in our best way and doing things totally healthy and with clear minds. Cause like you said, this isn't to change your life. It's just to give you clarity in your life. It's just to better your life and enhance your life and improve your life. And I feel like even this call, this, this podcast, I should say this interview with you has even given me more clarity, things that I've already been seeing more clearly over the past few months. Here it is again, it resonates with me. I mean, I will say I did get my period today. So I am quite emotional, but it really hit me today. Yeah. Eclipse (laughs) then period time. Yeah. Between the eclipse and and me having my period and your words just resonating at the right time, Mm -hmm. you know, it hit me even more. So it gave me even more clarity, even though I've been focusing on it, I've been paying attention. You know, you can never, it's never too much. You'll always gain more clarity. So it's crazy how much inner work you really can do to just overall improve your life. It's crazy. And it's, and it just takes dedication and takes self-love. And when you say it's not just to change, no, it's to evolve, Mm -hmm. definitely to evolve. Mm -hmm. You know, you never, you, you'll never change the core of who you are because we're all, we all are such unique, beautiful beings, but you will evolve into who you are becoming. Yeah. Which is back to yourself. Yep. And that's a perfect note to end it on. So thank you so much. We, we definitely have so much more that we can talk about because the amount of things that we pointed out are topics in and of itself. 
<laughs> they're, 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 this, it's like the overall umbrella and then there's the categories and then the subcategories and then the titles and the subheadings like there are layers upon layers so we layers. will definitely yeah we will definitely have to do this again but why yeah. don't you plug your social media username for everybody to find you on instagram and then they could find all your outlets from there definitely so you could find me on on the gram at janet.namaste you could find me on my website, JanetNamaste.com, and on also on YouTube, which is YouTube slash Janet Namaste. <laughs> mm-hmm. And also I'm a host of Raw Real Talks, which is an online platform where um, it's a global platform that is out there to empower everyone out there. So that is on Raw Real Talks. And that's, I go live every Tuesday at 11 a.m., and also we're, we're going to be launching a brand new community in February for everyone out there that will help people stay in line with their mindfulness practice, with their healing practice, with trauma, regression, and everything like that. So they can just sign up on my newsletter, you know, for my newsletter on Namaste, on Janet Namaste. Please, you know, show up and, and, and to these like free events and just be part of this beautiful community. We really built something that, you know, and I don't want to say out of nothing. It's like out of true compassionate love. So thank you so much, Victoria. Thank, thank you. you. This was Always amazing. a pleasure. Now you guys tell me, was I kidding or what? When I said this episode is intense and gets real deep. I think that that's enough for today. Everybody should honestly probably take a nap after listening to that. I wish I was kidding. Put a meditation on. Just go lay down and relax. That's exactly what I did after we did this interview because it's heavy and it's a lot to hold on your heart. So thank you girls so, 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 so much for listening. Be sure to leave five stars and a review and I will see you all next Monday. When you shop at a Walmart Vision Center, you get it. You know that you'll spend a little less on stylish glasses for the whole family. Welcome to the Vision Center. Let me know if you need help finding the perfect frame. Hey, Mom, you were right. These glasses are cool. Hon, they take our insurance. That means Papa's getting a new pair, too. Whoa, glasses start at just $39. Next stop, groceries. So you can get a little more of what you need. Find a Vision Center near you. Save money, live better. Walmart. Some people don't understand why you've already busted out the sweaters. They may raise a brow at keeping scarecrows out year-round, but you just go ahead. Let them stare, because you eat, sleep, and drink pumpkin at Dunkin'. So sip your classic spiced and iced $3 medium pumpkin spice signature latte, or try the Bold Pumpkin Cream Cold Brew, an ultra-smooth brew topped with pumpkin cream cold foam. Also $3 for a medium. All so you can fall harder. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply.